direct modeling in Fusion 360. What is direct modeling? Why should we use it? When is it pretty darn cool? Welcome to another Fusion Friday. Whenever you upload or import a file into Fusion 360, whether it's from GrabCat or from a friend, usually Fusion defaults into what's called direct modeling mode. You notice on this file, I have no design history along the bottom or timeline. The same file over here, I've got that timeline. So what's the difference? Well, in the first one where I don't have the timeline, I'm in direct modeling mode. If I right click on the file name, you can see that I can change or switch into parametric mode, which they call capture design history by clicking on that and doing so will start a timeline. I always like working in parametric mode or the design history mode for two reasons. One, it's kind of what we think of as traditional CAD where you can right click on things you've created in the past, you know, go back example the sketch and edit the sketch, change this location, etc. Also, when you're in parametric mode, you can always switch to direct modeling and you'd forfeit a lot of your parametric information or in the history rather, but you can always go to it. But when you do a bunch of work in the direct modeling, you can't just convert that into a parametric model. So let's talk about though uh, three great examples of where direct modeling is super helpful. Here's the awesome news. Fusion has made some pretty big improvements over the past year, and you no longer have to go into the direct modeling mode to actually take advantage of some direct modeling techniques. For example, we covered this back in Fusion Friday 43, making this hard inch 5C call it thing. And let's say I wanna take this call and I wanna delete one of the slots. So the way I would have done it in the past would have been to click one of them, hold down the control while I navigate around because we don't use space mice here. Click the third one and I've got all three selected and now I can hit delete. That would work in either parametric or direct modeling mode. What's nice now is while I'm in my parametric mode, again, the mode I prefer, I can drag a box and dragging a box will select faces. That's really helpful. Now that was a pretty bad way to select it because when I drug that box, I've selected a bunch more than I wanted. So I think about it, if I orient it right, what I wanna select is right in here. So if I drag the box this way, there you go. I've got those three things, hit delete, super easy. You know, do the same thing right here. Select those three, just double check. I got one extra thing. Hold down the control key, click it to deselect it, hit delete, awesome. Notice too, what's nice is when I do that, I hit the delete key, watch your timeline. You get a parametric event. So if I go back and I delete the event that was the delete of the faces, they come back. That's actually useful. Here's another good example. This is actually this week's Wednesday widget. This is a linkage mechanism. And let's say we had the placement wrong and we need to push it 10 thou north or up. Well, if I had the CAD data, I could right click and edit the sketch and change the maybe the sketch location. But we've all known, we've all tried to do that and it can be really frustrating. You don't have to, it's amazing. Drag my box. By the way, notice how I'm dragging left to right. When I drag left to right, it only selects things that I fully encapsulate. So take a look. By dragging the box this way, I get the inside faces and I happen to get these two, which I can, oops, hold down control and deselect them. Maybe I can, yeah, there we go. I can do it that way and only get the ones I want. When you drag right to left, it selects anything that you've even partially touched. So in this case, I get most of the model. So I've got those inside faces selected. Right click, move, look. I can just move it. So if we wanted to move it 0.01, I just move that 10 thou up, click OK. It's a parametric event, but I don't have to deal with any of the sketches or that whole mess of, did I do it right? Did I shift it? Is it fully constrained? Blah, blah, blah. Awesome. One last good example. This was a part, I forget, I think it was a probe tip, like a sort of poor man's Renishaw or Heimer type probe we made back in Fusion Friday 36. Let's just say, for example, we wanted to move these two points here, the two through holes and this center boss super easy rather than dealing with the sketches and well, here we could if we click on you know one of them that's a mirror click on the other one okay so it came from here so i could right click i could edit this sketch and i could try to change the angle to move them down you know let's say i wanted it at three o'clock instead of 12 o'clock 
not even worth it. Left click, drag a box around that stuff. I'm going to orbit around my model to make sure what I want is selected. Yep. Right click, move. We're going to do rotate. Axis will be my blue line, the Z axis. And I'm just going to drag it 90 degrees. Click OK. You are done. That is amazing. Last example, by far to me the most impressive. This is a Fusion 360 demo file. Let's say, rather than having this bracket mounted straight down in this face, let's say I need to straighten out this arm so it's going left to right, and I want that bracket moved 90 degrees. This, this would be, I would say, nothing short of a nightmare, I think, to do it parametrically, uh, especially if someone just sent you the solid model and you didn't have all the design history. I'm going to left click drag a box. Now pay attention. I'm going to left click drag all the way up to, but not fully including the uh, fillet. So I don't have the fillet underneath there. And actually, I think this is going to be wrong, but I'll show you. I don't have this top part either. Right click, move, rotate. What's my axis? Well, let's pivot it off of that line right there. So the problem is, yeah, so the problem is that it's not allowing me to move the face that I don't have selected. So click on the 16 selected here, hold down the control key, and now I can add the top face to it. So I now have 17, and now it should go like that. So now we've got it left to right, click OK. Now I need to select this guy, and I don't want to do this stupid control thing and going through and clicking everything. So I'll change my select from window to freeform. And remember, you still need to select left to right. So I'm going to click here, hold down, and kind of drag around. Now that only selected the bottom thing because I didn't get enough. So try it again. This time I'll go around up to here. Just so take a look at, again, what we've got selected. And that gives me the right selection. Right click. Move or copy, rotate again. Let's pivot it around the bottom. So axis, I'll pick that. And I'll just do that. Okay, I don't like what it's doing. Well, actually, we can fix that. Let's see. Um, well, here, I don't like it did that. Cancel. Let's change how we did that. Select freeform. Move, rotate. Let's pivot it off of the top. Might be better. You got to play with this. That's what I've learned. Yeah, that's better. That's a glitch. I think click OK, see what happens. Yeah, that went away. Okay, that's perfect. Now let's say I wanted to scoot it down a little. Switch back to window selection, select everything, right click, move or copy, it's so easy. Free move, I'll just click down. Oh, forgot to add the top arrow, hold down the control key and add that to it. And boom, look, amazing. Folks, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something, some really cool things in direct modeling. I definitely would encourage you to explore that world. Next week, stick around or click that subscribe button. We're going to show you some more features, including how to deal with the nightmare that can be models that just have terrible geometry that we need to clean up. Take care. See you soon.